Good morning everyone. It's another week, another vlog. It is a Thursday today. Just snacking on some roasted corn. I actually bought these to take with me tonight to pottery because I've realized a three hour class, I need snacks, but I'm just like digging in now. It's lunchtime. I was thinking, what do I have in the cupboard? We've got quite a bit of tuna. So I think I'm gonna make tuna wraps. Let's do this. Okay, I'm gonna do this in quarters. So on this first quarter, I'm gonna put tuna mayo with sriracha. Then I'm gonna put some tomatoes. Then I'm gonna put some avocado, like seasoned avocado. It's like a little bit brown, but it's fine. And then on this final bit, I'm just gonna grate some cheese because I'm gonna do a tuna melt. Oh, I hate this grater. Rich is taking over as cameraman today. I'm actually just gonna put on some sauerkraut. I wish I had um, pickles, but we don't. I was just gonna give it just like a little bit of something. Okay, ready for the fold. This goes there. That goes that way. And then That should be good. I'm gonna give it a little quick toast in our little toasty, oof. Did you give it a little sprite, right? Yeah. Quick spritz. I mean, I would say that it's a little bit saucy. <laughs> it's like spilled out everywhere, but I think it's gonna taste good. This actually looks so good. Hmm, that is nice. So you guys may have seen last week, I talked about it on Instagram, that Rich and I went on Giovanna Fletcher's podcast. Happy mum, happy baby, but it's like the parenting SOS version. It was a very daunting thing for both of us to do. It was very like brave and vulnerable of Rich to go on such a big platform as like a non-public facing person to talk about taking paternity leave and about health anxiety. So it's kind of, those are the two main topics in the podcast. Um, Rich took paternity leave with Rudy and had an amazing in insight into what it's like for women and mothers who take pater uh, maternity leave. It's just crazy how much stuff he didn't realize about how people feel during that time and he's had an amazing insight. So that's kind of one part of the chat and the other part of the chat is talking about health anxiety, which is something he developed after about nine months. And I think all kind of triggered from having kids and that feeling of responsibility to stay healthy, to stay alive for them. And we talk about health anxiety, which I think is something not many people talk about and it's quite hard to diagnose. So Rich was very brave for doing that. I felt quite nervous just because I think the more you open up to the internet and share about things like that, there's just more for people to judge. And I think over the past year, I've been more private online than I have in the past since before I'm ha I've had kids. But I do think sometimes it's really good to be vulnerable. And yes, some people might use that as ammo, but most people will gain something from it. And I've already had some amazing messages from you guys over the week, like about paternity leave, also about the health anxiety thing. So I think it's a really good thing that we did it. Anyway, the podcast has gone live and I will link it if you want to go have a listen or you can watch it on YouTube if you prefer to watch. Rich is doing so well now. He's like a totally different person. And if those feelings creep back in, we have tools and we know what to do and we know what it is now and he knows how to handle it. But just like anyone who's taken maternity leave, now that he's got some more time for himself, something to focus on, a bit of like him time. He's doing so much better. He's currently studying for a course, am I allowed to say that? Mm -hmm. To like retrain into a new career, which is really exciting. Actually, it's a huge privilege that he's been able to take this time off work to like take a pause and look at what he wants to do and move into something new. It has been hard, there have been hard times, but it's also been incredible. So I just wanted to let you guys know that that's there if you want to go have a listen. Mm. It was really good. Yeah, really tasty. I really wanted a vlog today, but I'm just not feeling it. I'm not in that like on the mood, which is really frustrating because today is the day. Today is the day I had at home to get some content shot and filmed. But I think I'm gonna have to continue this vlog. I'm not working tomorrow and then Monday. It's annoying that weekends are like now just like written off as a time to vlog because I used to love vlogging weekends before kids, but it's just like, impossible with kids and not enjoyable and good to have family time on the weekends. So I'm gonna continue this vlog on Monday. Sorry, I feel like I literally have not done anything today on this vlog. Just feeling a bit like I had a funeral this morning and I've got another funeral tomorrow, which is just mad. And it's just like a lot really. Quite hard to like come on here and be like normal when there's so much adult, adult life is just real. 
at the moment trying to like support everyone I know and be there for them so I'm just gonna like take it easy I'm gonna do some work that doesn't require me to be on camera and I'm gonna continue this vlog next week good morning everyone I'm back it's Monday sorry that I ended the last clip on quite a low it's been really like up and down and last week was a bit of a strange week but we had a really lovely weekend we spent Saturday in Suffolk with Rich's family the weather was amazing all weekend we had barbecue on Sunday Keisha's here she came over over with her kid and it's so lovely seeing like your kids play with your friends kids feeling quite refreshed feeling like I might have a productive day it's already like halfway through the day but I've done quite a lot of like admin stuff this morning thought I'd kind of get ready with you guys oh I hope that drilling is not loud before I get ready though I wanted to quickly chat to you about SPF because I'm feeling very like inspired by how the industry has changed SPF. I'm obviously a massive like advocate for sun safety. I talk about it all the time with my moles and stuff. I think a lot of people still are quite like not that clued up on how important it is to use SPF. Yes there's like the sun safety element which is the most important part but also I guess just like protecting your skin like fine lines, wrinkles, like making your skin last and look great the older you get. Wearing SPF is a huge part of that. I had a conversation with my brother-in-law who's constantly got his like forehead he's always getting like a tan on his forehead and I'm always saying you must wear SPF and I still feel like especially maybe like with men there's a bit of a pushback there but just making it like part of your morning routine part of your like moisturizer routine it's so important in the summer when it's like sunny every day it's so important to be wearing SPF every day but anyway you guys probably all know that and I feel like we already had like the big shift from traditional like sun cream which feels a bit weird to put sun cream on when you're like in the UK and you're not on holiday there was already like a shift and brands started bringing out like nicer lighter textures so you've got ones like beauty pie which is a spf i love this one from la roche posay is the aqua gel so it's much more of like a lighter gel moisturizer what else is there that's like under the more traditional bracket the skin of me spf is just kind of like a moisturizer spf maybe i would put these i don't know i feel like there's this new bracket of like trendy SPFs. It's a trend I am all for because I think if there's a way of making something quite boring and laborious, is that the word? Like putting on SPF, if you can make that trendy and cool and make like younger people want to do it I think that's only like a good thing and I think there's so many new brands now bringing out really cool new types of SPF that I would quickly show you some of the ones that I've got I'm sure you've heard of uh, ultraviolet ultraviolet I would I would have said ultraviolet but now looking at the spelling is it ultraviolet Violet? No, it must be ultraviolet. You know when you haven't said a brand out loud before? <laughs> I like love this brand, but I don't think I've ever heard anyone say the name out loud. I'm gonna go for ultraviolet. This is a very cool like female owned brand and they do a huge range of SPFs. Their most recent one, which is a mist, which I would only use as a top up, has like gone viral on TikTok. And I just think that's so cool. Like people were queuing up at Space NK to buy an SPF, like yes, love that. Their SPFs are really, really lovely. This one I use like all the time. It's the Supreme Screen Hydrating Facial Sunscreen. And it's just like a, a gorgeous, like slightly glowy, just blends in beautifully, feels great on the skin. Um, I also literally this morning, that's what triggered this chat, um, got sent this one from them, which is the Fave Fluid Ultra Light um, SPF. So this is a, a very, yeah, I. I haven't tried it yet, but I'm assuming it's very lightweight fluid SPF. It's very important to make sure you're using the right amount. Um, a lot of people say use two fingers worth, so put your SPF down two fingers. But I can kind of tell, like, just make sure you're really covering your skin and also going down onto your neck. Don't just do your face because then your neck's going to get all like wrinkly and you know, it will look different to your face. Branding's very cool. And there's so many different textures to choose from, which is amazing. Another one I love is from Summer Fridays. Again, a very like school, cool skincare brand uh, owned by like two content creators. Um, these are the shade drops trendy name cool packaging like i just think it's a really good idea that like spf is becoming cool another brand to look at is super goop they have so many different options so they've got this one which is the unseen sunscreen which is like a clear clear it's a clear texture it's a bit more like silicone-y this is just their their normal lotion but this one's really interesting and this is like a massive trend that i'm seeing loads of brands do now it's a glow screen and i've also got one similar from a 
brand called Sunbum and these are glowy SPFs and this I think is genius because it will get people who are into makeup into wearing SPF because it literally gives you a glow. So let me show you what it looks like. I'm going to put a little bit on my hand. Can you see? It's literally like a glowy primer. And I think that is so, so clever because it it gives you another reason to wear SPF. If you are like my brother-in-law and you're a bit like, eh, I don't care about wearing SPF. Okay, he's not going to wear this. But let's say you care about how your makeup looks, but you don't care so much about SPF. It's going to get people using SPF because they're going to buy it for the glow, for the gorgeous glowy base. So that one I've tried on my skin and I really like. I haven't tried the sun bum one it's probably the same to be fair i think a lot of these things are like made in the same places that looks very similar neither of them look like kind of tin man-esque glow it's not too much just gives you a lovely glowy base i've also got one from bior which is just quite similar to the la roche posay like a gel formula and then the one i literally just got sent i just got sent this um pr package from nude sticks and in there is this which I thought was quite interesting, the Nude Screen Daily Mineral Veil. So this is a, a mix of, it says it basically replaces your moisturiser, your primer and your SPF, which uh, I guess a lot of these SPFs do, they just don't say that they do that. It comes out as like a white moisturiser and it feels like a slightly kind of thicker moisturiser. I guess it could replace all three of those things but like any of these could really anyway i just thought that was like an interesting observation i think a lot of new cool stuff is happening in the spf space and jump on it get on it enjoy wearing your spf buy these like fun ones that make it part of your makeup routine same with body i guess i bet there are like lovely body spfs that give you like a bit of glow if that's what you want or make your skin look really nourished let's all wear our spf i thought i'd quickly look in this nude sticks box with you the reason for being sent this is because they've just brought on Sophia Ritchie as the nude beauty director. That's what it says. I don't know if this was organized before her wedding or as a result of her wedding, because I know that she wore some nude sticks on her wedding day. So that could be cool if like her makeup artist just used nude sticks on her. It all went viral and then she was offered this role as nude beauty director. That's quite cool. But in there I was sent the, the primer, the Nude Sticks Lip Butter, which looks like this. Let's try a little bit of that. Oh, minty. Tastes like a Christmas candy. And then what else have we got? We've got the Nudies Glow and Ice Ice Baby. I wouldn't normally go for highlighter that that kind of shade. I don't know, she's blonde, so maybe that's more for her. I'll give it a go though. These Nude Sticks are so great because it's basically product on one end and then a little brush on the other although I have to say I don't use the brush I like to use my fingers something I'm very excited about because I was almost about to purchase it is the nudies matte in picante 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 and this is Alana Davidson's collaboration um I've been wanting an orange blush for ages I bought one the Ilia and it was pink but the lighting in the shop fooled me this is proper proper orange I'm definitely gonna try this on today she wore that on her wedding day on her lips and on her cheeks and then there's also um sun kissed which is this kind of like terracotta red blush colour and two of their little sticks. The Intense Matte Lip and Cheek Pencil in Sun Kissed Nude. And then this one is a Magnetic Matte Eye Colour in Slate. This is the, the lip and cheek one. Oh, that's the eyeshadow stick. Okay, let's put on one of these glowy SPFs. Let's go for the Super Goop Glow Screen. Feels really nice on the skin. So all I've done is like my serum, my moisturizer, and then I guess I'm kind of using this as like a primer. Like how nice is that for adding a nice glow to the skin? I'm pretty sure Super Goop is a Space NK brand. You can get it in Space NK. Okay, let's do my base. I'm going to use the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation in shade 6, which is a little bit on the heavy side, but I find that if I just don't put too much on, and actually sometimes what I like to do is just mix in a little bit of like primer to make it just like blend easier. It's a really, really lovely finish. I just kind of like dot it around and then I just buff it into the skin I mainly do like the center of my face. It looks so much darker in the tube than it comes out. I'm like not tanned at all at the moment. This brush is It Cosmetics. It's got like a smaller concealer brush on one end 
and this is actually a really nice buffing brush it's not too like dense i get quite dark red eyelids so i just take the excess of my foundation over my eyes so i haven't put too much on you can still see all my skin underneath because i like to use this concealer but it's quite full coverage so i'd rather go less with my base and still be able to use this because it gives like a lovely finish it is the worst packaging ever it is shade coconut flakes incredible concealer I think I may have said this in my last video. I'm gonna work that in. It's called Faux Filter and it really does feel like you're adding like a filter to your skin. Such a nice concealer. Actually, maybe I should try the Faux Filter foundation if I love the concealer so much. I've never tried um, Huda Beauty foundation. So let me know if you guys have and if you recommend it. I'm then gonna take my Bobbi Brown Corrector. So this is like a pink concealer that will cancel out my very dark blue under eye circles. I just feel like I'm going to forever constantly have dark circles because I kind of did already before kids. I was always a bit prone to a dark circle and now I've got kids. It's just like permanent part of my face. I really want to finish up this bronzer from Rose Inc um, in Parrot K. I've got like hardly any left but I just don't want to like, feel like I really need to like get into these edges. There's still a little bit left. It's a lovely cream bronzer. I would definitely repurchase this. I don't know if I will because I've got like my Beauty Pie one on the go, which is really nice, but I would definitely go back to this. It's very like, um, whereas the Beauty Pie one is quite a wet cream bronzer, this feels a little bit more of like a softer formula. This one's definitely like easier to blend. You have to be a bit more um, gentle with the Beauty Pie one and like take it off on the back of your hand first. I really want to fake tan again but um, I'm actually having one of my tattoos removed which I don't know if that's going to be controversial. Is everyone going to like kick off when I say that? Possibly. You know I've mentioned before that I'm not that bothered by like my tattoos. I don't, I'm not the sort of person that has like massive regret but opportunity came up skin clinics offered me to try tattoo removal if i was up for it and there are two tattoos of mine that if i could remove i i would if if you know it's not like it wouldn't upset me if i didn't but i thought why not i'll give it a go i'm actually only doing it on one because um so the arrows that i've got here they were meant to be like that small don't ever get a tattoo when you're hungover and not really concentrating um, because i do regret not kind of spending more time working on the size and placement of that tattoo. But it was so painful to do it that I honestly don't think I'll ever be able to remove it because removing tattoos is really painful. Um, so I'm having the one on my ankle removed. It's one I like can see the most. Like I, even this tattoo, which is like just stars that I had done when I was at uni, like that one doesn't even annoy me or upset me. Um, I still love this one. I still love this one. I've got one on my back that I don't love, but I don't really ever see it. No one ever sees it. Whereas the one on my ankle, I see all the time and it just doesn't feel very me anymore. I still have great memories from it. I got it done when I was traveling with my ex-boyfriend and like, we're all good, me and him. So there's nothing, there's no like reason. It's just, I feel like it just doesn't suit me anymore. So I am getting that removed and I had my test patch last week and oh my goodness, it is so painful. So tomorrow i've got my first session where i like fully get it removed i need to go and buy some like numbing cream which you could put on like an hour before and it helps to like numb the area but yeah it's just a bit of a faff because you have to like it's like a wound and you have to look after it afterwards and you can't have any fake tan on your skin when you get it done and it's a bit annoying having it done over summer i guess because i really want to be like fake tanning and stuff and you you have to be careful like when it goes in the sun so yeah i just thought i'd start the process because i think it's going to take quite a long time to do the whole thing it's quite like a black tattoo but we'll see how i go i'm literally just going to use my i don't know if this is gross is it gross sometimes i just use my eyeshadow brush and like whatever's left on it just to kind of like almost acts as a setting powder over any cream products that have gone on my lid and also just gives like a little bit of color without actually doing proper eyeshadow mascara wise I'm loving the Hourglass Caution Mascara. I think a lot of you guys recommended this one and it is a really nice mascara. I'm actually just gonna gently apply it because if I really go for it, then it, it can be quite a lot for like a daytime look. I'm just gonna put one light layer. Now let's try this Canty blush 
think I'm going to, instead of applying it like straight on, because that would just be too much, I'm going to just first of all test it on my hand and I'm going to just use the brush, kind of work it into the bristles. Yes, that is nice. Well, that looks crazy on camera. It doesn't look that bright in real life. It's not blending like as easy as I wanted it to. I'm just gonna blend out the edges. I love the formula of the Merit blushes. I think they are the easiest to apply. I wonder if they do like an orangey one because I would absolutely love to try that if they do. I'm gonna have a look because I really, really like the, the formula. Also, some people take it onto the lips as well. Especially if you've got that lip balm there, it kind of grips to it. I'm not sure if it's showing really bright on camera, but in real life, it's quite subtle. Okay, that little chat about SPF has totally inspired me to make a reel. This is what I'm like with content. I'm so bad at planning. I'm much more of a spontaneous like, oh, I've got an idea. I'm gonna shoot it and edit it right now. <laughs> so I'm just gonna quickly do a little reel with like a little SPF reel. And then I need to head to the post office and I need to head to the pharmacy. And it'll be nice to get out and get a little walk. Okay, this is my camera film. I send it off to filmprocessing.co.uk. I'm just gonna run that to the post office. And also I'm gonna pick up some numbing cream. This is the tattoo, by the way, that I'm getting removed. Oh, I really need to shave around it. I haven't been able to laser hair removal around the tattoo, which is why I have like a bit of hair there. Uh, it means flower in Thai. I don't hate it. It's just not me anymore. But as you can see, they did a little test patch just on this bit here. It's already like a bit faded anyway, because it's quite old. So she thinks it'll be quite easy to remove. We've got this leftover from our barbecue, so I'm just gonna add this as a quick snack. Okay, taking a quick break from work, I've just been doing some like editing and stuff. I'm going to try and do like a little mini workout in the garden. Not Nothing major, like a little bit of skipping, a little bit of squatting, a little bit of lunging, but mainly skipping. I feel like skipping is a good in-between thing I can do between seeing my PT, because I'm <coughs> kind of like, you know, I feel like a month or two ago, I was feeling quite confident in my body and like feeling like me again. And I think it's because Rich was training for the marathon and we were eating quite well. And recently we've both just like, haven't really had time to think about it. I've just been like eating whatever. I'd only work out for 45 minutes once a week, which is nothing. So I'm trying to be a little bit more conscious of like eating healthy foods, healthy yummy foods, um, and trying to squeeze in a little bit more movement where I can. So I'm gonna try and do a little bit of skipping. It's not gonna be much, but it's better than nothing. I think my skipping rope, I haven't used it in a very long time, but I think it's in here. hope it's in here. I had to search the whole house but I found the skipping rope. Okay I'm gonna try and do like a minute of skipping and then 10 something and then a minute of skipping 10 something. <laughs> just do it like that so I get kind of breaks in the skipping because I find if you're just skipping with no like end it's a bit hard. I haven't got one of those like proper timers though. Idea. I feel like I'm either gonna wet myself, my tampon's just gonna fall out, I'm gonna get a stitch, or I'm gonna pass out slash be sick. Oh my god! I really can't make it to a minute. I'd like to learn like skipping tricks, but I can't even, I mean I can't even normally skip, but I see such fun like skipping videos online where people go like side to side. I can go, I can do side to side. That's quite good for like hip workout. I can do like legs up running. Oh my God, I can do. <laughs> Did you see that? I did one leg. Wait. 
Yes! That's hard. What else, what else does one do when they're skipping? Okay, there's one where you like go like that. Oh, I could do that. I'm gonna learn some cool skipping stuff. Watch this space. <laughs> Just before I pop in the shower, I went to Jo Malone with Georgia for a wedding scent consultation and they gave me the Blackberry and Bay shower gel. This is the fragrance that I wear and I can't tell you how much I've loved using the shower gel. Like having your favourite perfume in a shower gel, I really underestimated how amazing that is. I really want to film dinner for you guys because we're having that Dishoom barbecue box which just looks amazing but i'm really running out of energy i'm gonna go be with the kids we do like a little bit of tv time and then we come upstairs for bar hair washing they kind of play a bit stories and then bedtime and that whole period from like 6 till 7 30 is quite draining so me and rich are like getting ready and then i'm gonna come back to you guys and i will try my best to be not too lethargic oh my goodness i must look a state because bedtime was so funny and so cute because we took Grey to see Matilda the musical last week she's obsessed with like singing and dancing it's so funny like I wasn't sure if that would pass down onto my kids because I was very much like that but Rich totally is not like a singing dancing do a show type kid um but both kids really have that kind of like musicy creative gene from my side of the family Anyway, she was doing a Matilda show for us and Rudy was doing it too. And they like sing all the words and they do the whole like Matilda dance. And I was just crying. So I, d I don't know why I'm so emotional, but it's just so mad to see her at that age that she's like at the doing shows age. And it's so cute to see her like really try and do these little dance moves. Anyway, so I've been bawling my eyes out at bedtime. We are now making dinner. This is far too much for just us two, but we're hoping we can like freeze some of it once it's cooked. We've got one of the Dishoom summer barbecue boxes. So we, we've had the bacon naan roll box like many times before. It's really delicious. This is the summer barbecue box. It's new, they sent it to me very kindly. So inside the box, you get the, this spice mix. A uh, tea towel, which is cool. Love that, a Dishoom tea towel. And some skewers, which we actually already had, but good to have some new ones. We've got a Merg Malai, which is a richly marinated spiced chicken thighs. There's a lot of meat here. This is definitely looking for more than two people. A chicken tikka and spicy lamb chops. Oh my God, so, so good. Then I think you can do like a cucumber salad with it. Ah, didn't even see all the stuff on the back. Okay, so Rich is gonna cook the meat on the barbecue. Although I still don't understand if you cook it in a baking tray or on the skewers. Yes. When it comes to skewers. Yeah, you put on skewers. <sighs> I'm gonna work this out and come back to you. This is such a good kit. Oh my God, my sister is so lucky she lives next door because I said I'll text her when it's ready and she can come and get some. So this is the lamb chop. This is the chicken. This is also chicken. It smells incredible. This would be such a good box if you were like entertaining friends and you wanted a barbecue. Oh my God, I'm so excited to eat this. Oh my gosh, it smells incredible. Oh, look at those lamb chops. Mm. Maybe I'll do a little bit of rice. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be nice with the chicken. Oh, meat is done, it smells good. Ben's come over for leftovers. Leftovers? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Rich just tried the lamb and like had a meltdown. Oh my God, Rich, you're gonna like drop it on the floor. Oh, right. <laughs> um, mega, mega spicy. Yeah, but like, but you're quite tasty sensitive. Smiling, tasty spicy. You're quite sensitive to spice. Mm. Like you tend to think things mm. are spicy when they're not. This is so exciting. <laughs> Wait, can we just like, Okay, I've done like a little salad of cucumber, tomato, red onion, and a little bit of rice. And then I'm just gonna go for it. Right, let me just try, let me just try a little bit. Mmm, oh my God, that chicken. That is so good. All right, we're gonna enjoy our dinner. Guys, this is really good. It's 50 quid, Rich said, for a box. I think it serves way more. It says it serves four people. I think it would serve much more than that. So it's really good if you're having, easily. Yeah, if you're having a barbecue. It's all like pre-marinated. Oh, such a good, such a good box. Okay, we're going to eat our dinner. Chill out, watch some TV. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.